Hi, my friends. I'm coming to you from my garage. It's a rainy day, um, and I love it when it rains. I love the sound of it. So I'm here working. It was garbage day this morning, and I purposefully did not take any of my recycling out. The pile's pretty big, because we're gonna be working on some trash art, some street art, some recycled art combinations this week. So what I know for sure before we get into the specific artists we're gonna look at, is that when I've seen any artists gathering things from trash piles or recycling piles or from street art, is that they get organized. So what I'm gonna do is go through my recycling pile and I'm gonna see and sort the items I have because once I see what I have to work with, I will get inspired with an idea based on the artists that we're gonna talk about. Hi friends, I'm back in my garage and now I'm ready for step two. Remember, step one for me was getting organized. Now, I wanna introduce you and teach you about an interesting street artist named Arturo Bordello II. He is from the country of Portugal, which is in Europe, and he started in graffiti art but he's really moved to be an important and influential street artist that focuses on environmental issues. He has a love of the earth and cares about animals. So his artwork is built not only to be beautiful, but he says the most important thing when he makes his art is for his art to have a message and for his art to do some good in the world. Let's check out this video and we'll see what kind of animals emerge in his art. As I work today on my animal sculpture made from my recycling pile, I will share with you my progress in photos along the way. I think I've got my idea. I just wonder if I can make it all come together. Right, my friends I'm giving you a sneak peek at my inspiration for my trash into environmental art project these two swans were nesting right down from where I live and I've been keeping my eye on the mama who's been on the nest the whole time and the daddy swan is a little more brave and adventurous. He goes out, um, but he keeps an eye on his family. Oop, I gotta get on the side. This is the first time I have seen the babies hatched. And hopefully I'll be able to get a little closer view of them in the future to share with you. Pretty cool. Here are some really cool facts about swans that I learned today in between working in my yard and working on my sculpture. One, there are only seven varieties of swans in the world and they are greatly impacted like other birds from waste such as plastic in our environment. 
two of these seven varieties, they are on five of the continents. There are only two continents where swans are not native or typically naturally from that place. Those two continents are Antarctica, can't find a swan there, too cold, and Africa. However, in Africa, sometimes a swan comes unexpectedly from another continent like Europe that is close by, but they are not native. And remember that that word means they are typical to that place. Can't wait to share with you the next steps of my swan project. It's been going pretty good. I wonder what you're working on. Here's another fun fact about swans. The male, the boy or the daddy swan, is called a cob. The female or the mama swan or the girl swan is called a pen. And the baby swans are called signets. That word seems like it's French. And when I think of the word signet and swan, I think about a piece of music from the ballet Swan Lake. So I wanna make sure that I include that on this video so that you can hear that music Swan Lake and be thinking about how I built my swan along the way.